This is a Dell Optiplex that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for $10. I don't know if it works. I don't know what's inside of it. So let's figure that out. Before we work on this computer, let's hook it up and see if it powers on. I know that there's not a hard drive, but it still should go to the boot menu. And look at that, it does. Now that we know this computer is working and operating, we can open it up and see what's inside. But before we do that, I did notice on the front that there was a Core 2 Duo sticker. So as long as this hasn't been tinkered with, that should be the CPU we're working with. Just like any other computer, I opened this one up and took a look around what I'm working with. I did notice an IDE cable. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's an IDE cable for the floppy disk reader. The first thing that I wanted to do is get the DVD writer and floppy disk reader off of the computer, as well as the other harnesses and everything holding everything together. The next harness that we're taking off holds the SSD or hard drive, and it's also a heat sink for the integrated GPU on the motherboard. I do not think I have seen an integrated Intel GPU quite like this before. And now we're going to remove the graphics card since we're already down here. This one actually has a double slot for a low profile, which is pretty cool. I've actually never seen this before, so it's really neat to see this. And the last thing I did was unscrew the heatsink for the CPU. I've never seen a heatsink like this before. It was really cool to see all these designs in this computer that is over 10, probably 15 years old. Now that everything's taken off, let's clean off this old thermal paste off the CPU and heatsink, and now it's ready to dust. After giving it a decent dust and wipe down, I reapplied thermal paste and put the heatsink back on. I also reattached the other heatsink for the integrated GPU that we won't be using. It will be used to hold our SSD, so it will come in handy. And now we will be reattaching the floppy disk reader as well as the DVD writer. I wish I was able to test the floppy disk reader, but I do not own any floppy disks, unfortunately. I really want to in the future, so I really hope that I'm able to at some point. Now that everything's reattached, we're going to be reapplying thermal paste on the GPU. At this point, I am unsure what graphics card that this is, but we will find that out when we are updating this computer and getting everything downloaded. I started off by unscrewing all four screws to get the fan off, and then I wiped off the old thermal paste, reapplied it, and attached everything back together. It was that simple. Now that I got the graphics card put back together, I'm able to put it back into the computer. I slid it into the PCIe slot, making sure that both ends were able to fit in the side. The last thing that I added was this 128 gigabyte SSD. I knew that I did not want a hard drive because I wanted to see the most performance out of all of these parts. And I didn't really mess with the RAM because I don't own any DDR2 at this moment. And four gigabytes is enough to run Windows 10 and be okay. And with that, this completes this build of this $10 Dell Optiplex. I was able to boot up without any issues. I plugged in my USB for Windows 10 and it sat on this screen for five minutes. But finally, I was able to get Windows 10 booted up. I didn't have any issues with the setup besides I had to format my SSD over to MBR. And so I've had to do this for many computers, so it's not that big of an issue. So besides that, it ran pretty smooth. Same thing with the Windows setup. There is no issues. I really feel like this SSD is helping out this computer. Like any other computer, the first thing that I do is I update Windows and I make sure everything's downloaded. Through these updates, I was actually able to find out that my graphics card was a Radeon HD 6570, which is pretty good, honestly. I was honestly expecting like a half gigabyte or a quarter gigabyte card. Now that Windows was updated, we were able to see that we had a Core 2 Duo E4600, which only has two cores and two threads, which I can already tell now that this is going to hinder our gaming performance and our everyday use. I had some issues with downloading the drivers for our graphics cards. I had to go with the AMD Catalyst instead of just the regular AMD experience, which did confuse me a bit, but I was able to figure it out and get everything downloaded. As you can see, this graphics card is running at one gigabyte of VRAM, as well as only being DDR3 compared to the latest GDDR5 or GDDR6. So we are gonna see some performance issues with these games, but it still should work. Before we get into the games, I wanna look at just basic web browsing and being on the internet. I honestly think besides it being a little bit slow for the two cores and two threads, I was honestly expecting it to be pretty slower, honestly. This is not that bad of a system. I mean, for $10, if this is what you have to go to, it, you can make it work. YouTube, on the other hand, is going to struggle with some issues. 1080p YouTube, 
is not really playable with a bunch of drop-in frames. And 720p YouTube is technically watchable. It did drop a couple frames here and there, but besides that, it is watchable. If you wanna go lower than that, it could be perfectly fine. But now it's time for some games. The first game that we have up is Minecraft Beta 1.7.3, running at 1080p fast settings. We got an average of 67 FPS, which is playable. There is a good amount of stutters, and we did dip down to 31, but not into any slideshow type of playing or anything like that. I will say, any newer Minecraft experience, I tried 1.20 on Simply Optimized, I tried 1.12, I tried 1.16. I tried many versions of Minecraft and they all would not get above like 20 FPS average. So this is probably like the latest, maybe a couple more versions of beta sooner, but besides that, I don't think you're going to be getting any newer version of Minecraft with this computer. The next game that we have up is Left 4 Dead 2 running at 1080p medium settings. We got an average of 46 FPS with a maximum of 98 and a minimum of 7. There is a good amount of stuttering, I did choose one of the later maps on the game, so that could be why. But at the same time, you know, this two core duo is not going to be holding up that well. If you're wanting a better frame rate, better than 45, you can probably push this down to 720p high settings to hit that 60 FPS mark. And honestly, it would be a way better playable experience. The next game that we have up is GTA 4 running at 720p medium settings. We only got an average of 23 FPS with a maximum of 63 and a minimum of 7. This shows that this Core 2 Duo is not holding up that well in this game and that's really pushing the limits of it. I was able to get a couple quests done but besides that, I would not recommend this experience. Now we have Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition running at 720p low settings. We got an average of 27 FPS with a maximum of 38 and a minimum of 15. The minimum wasn't as bad as the last two games that we looked at, but it still technically isn't that playable of an experience. If you're really wanting to push it, you know, I have all the settings really low and I put the textures on medium, so I could have turned those down as well, but I still wanted this to look all right. Overall, I think this was all right and you could technically play this and pass it as playable. The last game that we'll be looking at that is running at 720p is Terraria, which we have at high settings. And it's running at an average of 59 FPS, only dipping down to 53 FPS. This is a really playable experience, and I would really compare this to the Xbox 360's edition. I tried this on 1080p, but I only got an average of like 42, 43 FPS, so I really wanted to hit that 60 mark, so 720p will have to do. This is the actual last game that we'll be looking at today. It's Don't Starve, running at 1080p normal settings. We got an average of 59 FPS, with a maximum of 61 and a minimum of 22. Indie games and smaller titles like this are going to have a better chance of running on this computer, and are going to perform way better than AAA games or million dollar studios designing a very resource heavy game. So if that's what you're looking for, is just smaller games and little games to play with your friends and this could be a perfect little computer. Overall I think that this computer was worth it. It was only $10 and I mean I was able to get it to work. Let me know down below in the comments would you have bought in this computer? Anyways that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys next week.